Okay, thank you. Uh, I will be speaking today uh, about Shaving World. Sorry, uh, third French in a row, so you should be uh, accustomed to the accent. Uh, I will be speaking about three dimensional um, uh, visualization uh, uh, application for representing geographical time space. On behalf of Alain Rustis, with many researchers against, uh, in this project, which, uh, who can be here today. So, I will uh, speak about what is the problem with uh, time space. Uh, I will show some examples of um, geographical time space representation, and I will give you some information about the project. Of, uh, I can't show you, make you a demo because it's too short in a time. But let's see. so, what's the problem with time space? So, in geography, this is a geography uh, project. Uh, we have, there is two major concepts with, with um, issue. Say, so where is something? Where is it? And at what distance something is from somewhere, something else? Uh, but in the daily life movement, we uh, thought about time. When I go to work, I don't say, oh, it's 15 kilometers. I say, it's, oh, I go to work in 15 minutes. Okay? So we thought in time. So there are two concepts in this. The geographical distance, we have to go to somewhere, and the geographical time space. So how can we represent those two objects? the geographical time space and the geographical distance. So I will show you some example and then I'll show you a little bit of uh, shriving world. We'll try to mitigate the issues. So it's an old question. This is uh, uh, the Pettinger table, which is a uh, um, medieval document uh, about a Roman, Roman uh, iterarium. And if you saw the, the orange line with steps on it, it's believed that one step is uh, one day traveled by horse. So it's a very old data. And with that, a merchant can say, OK, to go to there, to there, I have maybe uh, many, many days of travel. So this, this is actually a solution. It's not very perfect. And we have some modern reflection on it. So this is. Um, Famous Mac L uh, representation. Uh, it's an homotety, so the world is a little shrinking. Uh, uh, when the transportation modes can became faster. For example, at the before the um, industrial revolution, you go there uh, by uh, horse carriage or by foot. So it, the world was very big. It's very. It was uh, the next village was already. Uh, Far. Uh, so, and now nowadays the world is very uh, narrow. You can go to uh, New York in a couple of hours, in a bunch of hours. So, um, so it's a very great representation to show uh, the acceleration of transportation modes. But you can't compare different modes, but not on the same period. So, modes can't exactly coexist. Uh, modes, I, I mean uh, train, uh, cars, food, and so on. So transportation modes. And there is no representation of networks. So the, the networks are, are different uh, on those. This one from uh, Chimizu uh, in the 80s used uh, an anamorphosis. Uh, and make a cartography of it. It's from uh, Japan, and try to uh, show how the Japan shrinking is shrinking uh, with uh, the arrival of uh, fast train and, uh, and uh, airplanes. So it's a great to show acceleration. We, we have uh, from the 60s to uh, project after the 80s. Uh, you can mix a little bit the, the modes. But you, it's not represent, so it's not easy to see if it's uh, by train or by plane. And uh, you can maybe thought about the networks, but they're not really 
uh, unphased. Unphased. This uh, map is about uh, is was made by Tobler, which is a famous uh, who is a famous uh, geographer, and uh, he keeps the cities at their place, made networks in it, and uh, uh, try to make strings uh, in the network. So the, the edges are, stri are springs. Sorry. So good things. Networks are uh, preserved. Okay. Um, and represented uh, modes can partially coexist also, but it doesn't show acceleration. So you are stuck in. Uh, it's a picture of one time. So the streaming world um, uh, hypothesis is to show in a 3D map, you keep all the um, the summit of each cone is the actual city. It's in the 3D uh, projection. And we, we have two, um, two travel modes. The fastest one is the red line, always the red line. It doesn't move. And you, we apply a ratio from the fastest to the, the slowest. And the slowest is represented by the blue line. And actually, the blue cone, which is it's a cone. It's in 3D, so it's a cone. The blue cone summit is moving. Uh, from the ratio between the fastest and the slowest man. So, for example, with uh, uh, jet planes and cars, we have this kind of um, cones, but if you have uh, supersonic planes, the cone is steeper. Okay? Because the ratio, the difference between a car uh, going at 100 kilometers is very much bigger. So it gives things like that. So uh, maybe in uh, the early 30s, you can go to uh, London to Berlin. This is the blue line. This is actual uh, position of the city. Uh, this is a worldwide map. So each summit is an airport, actually. Uh, so in eight hours, maybe you can do that distance with a propeller airplane. It's pretty much like uh, 2,060 kilometers, uh, London to uh, Bucharest. If you have uh, an airplane who is able to do uh, an eight-hour fl flight. Uh, if you, uh, in the 60s, we have uh, airplanes with uh, jet engines, so we can do uh, a little bit farther and faster. So maybe we can do still do Lon London Berlin, but you can do also to uh, London New York uh, or London. Uh, Paris to New York as well, and we have a little bit uh, more network. So you can go uh, a little bit uh, in eight hour farther. So and you can see the cones start to be to be a little bit shaped and steeper. Uh, in the nineties, and the last uh, half of the, the last part of the twentieth um, century. We have the uh, supersonic airplanes, the Concorde, and a little bit of uh, time, the Tupolev. One Tupolev was able to make that. Uh, you can watch farther. You can go um, in eight hours. You can uh, make a very big travel. But the Concorde was only six hours uh, autonomy. So, And there was only two uh, destinations from New York. It was Paris or London, and the other way around. But that's it. So the network was very narrow at the time. So you can see the the, uh, the cones are very steeper and sharpy. Sharp, sorry. And after the end of the commercial use of Concorde, we are back at the same point uh, in the 60s with jet airplanes. The, the autonomy is a little bit better. They can go a little bit far, uh, faster, but not so much. But the <coughs> network, the airport network, is much more dense. So you say, well, how you speak about acceleration? If you combine things, you can make and uh, represent acceleration. So we have the same visualization like Mac Air, and we have something uh, like um, uh, Sablier. <laughs> Uh, and you see well, that the, the 
it's acceleration. The transportation modes can accelerate when when no uh, get slower. So this is one of the this is the capabilities and the main goal of the Shriving World project. I will be talking a little bit more of this project. In the okay, this means to represent a complex reality. Uh, it's for research application. There is no practical use, uh, but it's, it tackles uh, things from cartography, uh, computer graphics, and scientific vision. Uh, it's a free open source software, uh, mostly in uh, uh, JavaScript. You can find the code on GitHub and find the, uh, the research blog on hypothesis.org, uh, timespace.hypothesis.org. And we have a small, um, a small team, so feel free to join. And if you have any questions, I'm here for you. Thank you. <coughs> yeah. um, have you um, used this into uh, comparing um, soft modes of transportation between cities? and the walkability indexes? Actually, no. The only... Um, ah, so you, you asked me if you, uh, we used it uh, for slow modes, uh, actually in cities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, no. The only application we use it, the only data set we use are airports position and uh, comparison between uh, flight mode and uh, terrestrial transportation uh, modes. Maybe you can do that, but you need the data for that. Sorry. The, 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 yeah. the point I was uh, thinking about is that uh, in terms of city planning, sometimes we want to see, can we create more spaces for certain soft modes, uh, cycling and others? And so what is the difference um, which could make? And maybe this project could help visualize it. Yeah, maybe it can be uh, helpful for city planning, but uh, we don't have any data set and it's not our um, subject. But maybe you can contact us and try to work with us. It might be interesting, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much.